Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And uh, we are currently on a hot air balloon ride. This is Maggie Myrtle and her husband, Mike. And if we can get past their appearance right now, which is metallic and a little sad, they are seeing something that I think is valuable because it's really changing their perspective on the city. So if we click out of here, what they are viewing is the Lewis Lumber Company. And what they're noticing is what a great location it's in. And we're gonna bring this back to daylight. What they are noticing is that it is in a, in a fantastic location. Yet, instead of taking advantage of this location, the city has allowed an industrial area to remain. Well, that's about to change. The city is currently undergoing its comprehensive plan rewrite. A comprehensive plan guides all development in the city, and it identifies future land uses for areas that are yet to be developed and areas that are already developed. It really tells the story of what the city will become in the future. And for the Lewis Lumber Company, it has identified this area for a number of things, none of which are industrial. The city's looking at this and thinking, wow, this could be an excellent place with a node of commercial activity. Over here, it could be a transit-oriented development, and this right here, the cargo train terminal, could become a passenger train terminal. There are a number of things that could happen over here, uh, and they all deserve some thought, but none of those things involve industrial. Linus Lewis is not impressed with this, but he does not have the political capital, even though his family was a founder of the city to get the council to consider or to reconsider their choice. So at this point in time, he's looking for options. And interestingly enough, he turns to his partner, Maggie Myrtle, who has successfully lobbied for industrial to be considered over here. Sensing that he has an opportunity and that good things sometimes come out of bad situations, he's going to look to relocate significant portions of his factory operations over here, decommission this and open this land up for redevelopment. Now, this is not gonna be a small feat, but he does know one thing. When we look at the supply chain, he's overproducing lumber. So this has been an underutilized land for quite some time and right sizing his lumber supply in the right location on cheaper land might mean that he makes some money and Maggie's gonna make money too. So this works for everybody. So today that's what we're gonna do. Let's start out by thinking about how we would lay out this industry over here. So the very first thing we need to do is look at our terrain. We want to respect our topography and ensure that whatever we build over here is uh, keeping within the spirit of the terrain. We also wanna respect the surrounding uses. So over here, we have some really nice uh, entertainment type uses that we wouldn't want to get too close to anything overly noxious. That said, there are fewer better neighbors than trees. So the very th first thing we're gonna do is build a road. We're gonna give it enough separation from this contour line, not because it's gonna drop off things dramatically, but rather because it's a nice guideline for us to build from. So Myrtle Fields, the, the name is hovering right over where I want to look at building a road. That's that's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. We're gonna build it, a road at an angle. And actually, I'm gonna take a step back. I don't wanna destroy this rock at all possible. So we will get a little bit closer over here. And then we're gonna use our curved road tool to line up with the guideline. Click that guideline and then have a nice smooth turn in. So I want this road to be remarkably straight. So we're gonna use some relatively regular numbers and I might actually back up from this idea. Let's go back into our terrain and I am gonna put this here, but I'm gonna try to keep it roughly approximately the same as what we were using for our initial road that we built. Then I will make one more curve or just reorienting, reorienting this a bit, reorientating this a bit, <laughs> reorient, re yeah, whatever, you know what I mean. All right, and now we're basically at the end of our developable land. 
So we're gonna go another 20 tiles over and then I'll use the curved road tool again, to line this up and we're probably gonna do something over here. By probably, I mean we're absolutely gonna do something where we have some sort of turnaround and then follow our terrain again. So all of the work that we're doing right now is incredibly expensive for Linus. The nice thing about having a, a good developer friend though is that his friend is helping him in absorbing some of the costs of this engineering work. That's some of the soft costs that can really eat into a project's budget. Maggie understands that and is offering some of these at a deeply discounted rate to help out her friend. Her friend that is unaware that she did something a little bit underhanded, but she's gonna get away with it because that happens from time to time, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I guess, if you're Maggie. It's the one thing that she's done that uh, I think we can all agree is a bit dubious. And there we go. So we have the outline of where our new grow. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> I, uh, I decided to leave this gap here for no apparent reason. That would certainly decrease the efficiency of the roadway network for the industry area. That's better. All right, so let's survey what we have. We've got a local roadway network. It's circular, it connects to collectors, and uh, we're gonna need another network in here. One of the things that uh, I wanna focus on in this particular area is trying to maintain this one-way network and the efficiency that it has. We have the potential to break this because we currently have no real logical connection to this network. And we know that this is gonna be utilized by this forestry industry, whether I like it or not. That to me means that we're gonna to need to do something with this road. And that's both responding to a game mechanic and re responding to just you know, the real pressures of a, of a built environment. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the paths that are needed and desired are met. So I'm gonna, instead of demolishing all this stuff, I'm gonna relocate some of it. Again, let's take a look at what we're using. So we currently have 152 tons output just raw materials. So that is a waste. And we know that we have a bunch of factories and things like that over here, a pulp mill. I don't know that we're gonna recreate all of this. I don't know that, uh, I, don't, I don't know that there's a lot of value. We've just built brand new factories over here. I mean, there's certainly value. I, I guess I wouldn't, I, that, that was the wrong way of putting it. I, I just don't know that it's, it's gonna happen. So we are gonna decommission some of this over here over time. The one thing we're not going to decommission is we have a furniture factory and a printing press over here. We're gonna to wanna to put those in prominent locations with quick access to this rail line. So what that means to me is that they're probably gonna go here over in this area. And if we have any other material uh, factory sorts of unique factories, they're gonna be built over here. Warehouses related. So, okay. Let's move some of these over. And the, each of these has a, a production that's roughly, let's see. Let's find one of our better producing. So I just wanna see, these are small and it looks like it's a little under 10,000 units per week. This is a medium, it's 12. And then we have some over here that aren't doing as well. My guess is if we take a look, yeah, it's just not quite as dark over here in terms of our forestry. If we look over here, we can see that it's mostly good. We may want to plant a couple of trees up here just to, to get things boosted where they should be. But for the most part over here, it's, it's all right. So I'm gonna take some of the medium plantations first and move those over. Let's keep in mind what we need. We need 138 over here and 96 over here. So a little over you know, 225 tons roughly is what we need. So if we were gonna include this one right here and go with mediums, we need about 19 of these. What, actually, why don't, we, why don't we really think about this? Because we, we do have, when this was built, we didn't have large tree farms available to us. So the large tree farm produces, oh, interesting. This is, so these are overproducing because of the efficiency bonuses that we get from the workers' barracks. So right here, this is producing, let's see, 
Oh, this is actually 800. So it's producing, it's producing the 20% more. That's interesting. So the sapling produces less than the plantation. So if we were to go with the sapling, we're looking at basically 20% more than our medium. So we're gonna wanna, I wanna look at the tree plantations. So if we were to plant these, then we're, we're, we're in a little bit better of a spot. Uh, so assuming we get the 20%, we're probably looking at like 16 of these that we need. So let's, let's go ahead and we'll start laying down large plantations. Now this could have an impact. We might not be able to fit large on both sides. So maybe we'll do a mixture of the two. We're going to extend our factory area over here. We'll clean this up after the fact. For now, we're just gonna spread it over. And then I do wanna look at the resources because I get to do something I like doing. Something I don't get to do often. Okay, this place is now significantly more flammable than it was before, but it also has a very high production rate. Now I'll clean this stuff up in the future. I don't love <laughs> the way the, the spam of palm trees looks over here, but that's okay. It, it's all for the greater good and we are going to deal with it. So let's get these planted. Now I don't wanna disrupt that. So we're just gonna place this here. And now I think we're gonna move down to our medium. That curve is just brutal. We can't put anything there. So we are gonna have to mix them all in. And in fact, we might even want to reconsider some of our roadway network decisions. Maybe not, maybe we'll be okay. So what we're gonna do to make this work, we're just gonna toss a road down here, send this down, and that should leave us in a place to plop some of this stuff. Yeah, that is really a struggle. So I am actually reconsidering some of these. What we're gonna do is send a road back here. Okay. So this road will connect in a couple of key lo locations and this will provide some connectivity through here and it will help us lay out this industry area because we're starting to, to see some issues. Now I do want to make sure that I have sweeping turns. So like this right here is not good enough. So we're going to sacrifice some of our buildable land to make this an easier turn for trucks. Hopefully I didn't do too much there. <laughs> we'll find out. We're about to find out. Yeah, I just totally destroyed that. <laughs> so there's a way around that too. And it's not big enough. So <laughs> we'll just take this back. We're gonna we're gonna try this out a couple of times till we get it. Okay, so we got one there. And that leaves me satisfied. Although I do want these to to be across from one another. We can decorate this a bit and make it look a little bit nicer soon. And we're gonna do something. We're not gonna leave it looking like this. Right now, this is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call this beautiful. I'd call it workable. Okay, and I might do. I'm gonna do something very similar over here to what I just did. I think it'll be a little bit more efficient if we have some sort of break in the roadway network, rather than forcing all of the truck traffic to loop around. What I'm really hoping that I can accomplish, though is that I can fit another tree plantation right next to this. Ah. <laughs> well, I can get a small one and that's fine. And then I don't think we're doing any more large. So yeah, we've got, we've got that right there. So that's about it. We could, yeah, there's, n there's nothing more that we could fit in, in here. So one of the things I want to do at this point is go ahead and calculate how much I'm producing here. So I'm gonna do that and then I will give you the number in just a second. Okay, so the math is in and this would produce about 118,000 tons of product. So that is not enough to fulfill the needs of our current industry, but it's important to remember that we have extra factories here. But one of the things that I noticed is that I could produce even more. So I mentioned that the large tree plantation produces more goods than the large tree sapling field. Okay. Well, interestingly, the small tree sapling field produces more than the small tree plantation, and they take up the exact same amount of space. So what I'm going to do is completely optimize this, get rid of all of these, waste a whole bunch of money, but we're going to replace these with the sapling fields, and that should 
absolutely maximize our efficiency. We're not going to ever reach the level that we were at before, but that's not the name of the game. The name of the game is to lock in some of his capital gains. So he's going to make some money. He'll have a smaller operation. It will be much more efficient. And that will do the trick for him. There we go. Now, I want to set these to be a similar tree species. Now, that's probably not good for diversity's sake, but it will be good for my decorating's de decorating sake. So, or at the bare minimum, we'll keep them bunched together. So we'll have beech right here. Why don't we do alder right here? Actually, let's do conifer, which is actually pine trees. And then we'll do alder at the bottom here. And these, I think it's either greenhouse or field, and the field is this, the greenhouse is this. I like the greenhouse. I will leave it as a greenhouse, and that will do the trick for me. So at this point, it's time to put water pipes underneath the road where they belong. Okay, so now I want to decorate just a bit. So this was a beach. We're going to go in here, we're going to decorate all the way around there. So the very first thing I want to do, and maybe this is foolish, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the trees in here. And now I'm going to look for that beech tree and plant it in there. Okay, so finally found it. It was a bit of a struggle. I'm going to very, very liberally sprinkle these through. So I guess it's not really a sprinkle as much as it's a... I'm going to completely spam this, but thoughtfully, because that's the only way to spam trees, in a thoughtful way. You know, the more I think about these palm trees, the less I like them. So I think that if you were going to make a landscaping company, maybe that would be a good appearance. We are not making a landscaping company, although maybe we should at some point. That might be neat. Either way, I really like the way the alders turn out. I, I think even though we, we know that not all of this is the industry, it just looks like it and it feels good. And I'm all into the feeling. So let's, let's take our feeling and run with it. And I think that we're just gonna really make this feel like it's an industry area based around this tree that's been planted here. We know it's not natural, it's not native or not in, in this this amount but we'll take it it looks nice here and it, it's gonna do the trick it's gonna produce more valuable lumber I mean that's what it's really all about so now I understand that you just watched me plant trees and then immediately delete them and I apologize for that that is the only time that that will happen in the series because I only add trees <laughs> that uh, removing trees just doesn't doesn't sit well with me in, in, a, in a course of practicality in real life, if you're building something, work around nature. Work with it, don't work against it. And I think that removing too many trees often is working against nature. And nature has this, this funny way of coming back to haunt you. So uh, keep it there. And then in the game, I mean, I just, there, well, there's no point to remove trees. You should add more. <laughs> I just want to double check. I think I used the wrong tree here. I did. I used the beach. So we'll switch that over to beach. Over here I do have alders, so that fits well. Just make sure I got them all. I could fit a couple more in here. Man, that feels good. And then when we look in our resources, yeah, we're 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 loaded. That is that is perfect. So one more small area. I think that we are going to stick with our beaches over here. And then we'll get rid of all these palm trees. Now, if I weren't doing this, I would question this layout a little bit. I might pull this road in to try to preserve developable space, but the, the grades already make this impossible to develop for anything else. So in my estimation, if it's if it's not this, it's really zoned, uh, zoned lumber. So, and I don't really, I'm not very excited about that. So we're just gonna do this. I think this will be a nice, Nice aesthetic in this area. 
Okay, and we have used all normal roads over here. I want to downgrade these. I should have done this right off the, off the bat, but we're going to use an industry road over here. They're concrete, which would hold up better over time. We don't really care about the noise. I think what we care about more is that we don't get gigantic potholes. And having concrete will ensure, or not ensure, but it'll make sure that we're in a better spot there. So that's what we're going to do. This will hold up better. It'll cost a lot more up front, but over the long run, it'll be cheaper. So there we go. One more area that I missed. Okay, so now one thing that I didn't do over here that I could have done is add a place for the lumber storage. I'm really banking on this working, that they're all gonna funnel their way over to here, drop off the raw forestry products in this area, and things will work out okay. We can check that a bit, and I'm curious, where are vehicles going here? basically everywhere but where I want them to. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. If I have to add more storage here, that's fine. I'm not overly concerned. I do want to start decommissioning some of the stuff over here. One of the things I think I'm gonna keep, we have a workers barracks over here. We have two over here. I don't think it'll be a problem to fit. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I thought maybe I could sneak one over here. I cannot, that's okay. And, I, and the terrain over here, is going to make it so that I have to dig out a space for it if I want to add it. I don't want to add it that much. So we're just going to lose some efficiency here. We'll, uh, we'll be okay with that. The other thing that I don't think we factored in is the main industry area, which let me figure out where that is. Right here. So we need this to move now. And that actually can go right here. So we'll put that off this local road. We're gonna put it on that. So this road right here is a two-way road. And it actually makes a ton of sense to put it next to this workers barracks area. So let's decorate around here a bit, put some fencing. And it's interesting, they already have fencing. So I think we're just gonna to add to it and then try to do something interesting around it. So let's keep a tile back. We'll come around and connect up. And it does snap there. So we have a, you know, kind of a backyard resting area for them. Let's use some of our park life assets. And maybe we can make this a bit more interesting. So we're giving the workers a place to eat and we'll give them a tree to sit underneath. And we're going to represent the, uh, maybe not. <laughs> so we, we'd represent the trees that are actually in the area. We'll put some shade there. Leave two out of the shade, one in the shade, and then we will decorate around the outside with palm trees because this is Verde Beach and this makes it feel like a vacation. All right, and just like Tesla, the Lewis Lumber Company has relocated just across the river, not across the country. So let's start decommissioning some of this stuff. So this is the forestry maintenance building. And I want to take a look at this too because we don't have one across the river. So I do think that we are going to move this over here and find a place for it. We need this one. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be in, in a tough spot with our, with our forestry industry. And of course, it's not going to let me pull my usual shenanigans to make this work. Oh, so it's so close, but so far from being able to fit. So I might, I'm going to need to get creative to make this work. So we've actually got some room across this road. I don't like this location at all. But I think it might be the best I can do. I'm going to extend this out. That's not at all respecting the topography, but we're going to go with it. Not an industry area. Yeah, that's pretty ugly. We're going to we're going to fix this. So, let's get this over here. And then we need to level our terrain. That's that's unex that's that's wholly unacceptable what I just did, and I am I am ashamed with myself and disappointed. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do this right, or why do it at all? So we'll take that away, and then we'll add that road back. Then we'll relocate this over, and it should be a level pad. Then we can fix things up in this area, make this look a little bit more rational and reasonable. And I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit further and then come around the edge, just taper it. 
You can taper more. Grab something in the middle. Create a ledge. Continue to taper. Until you get rid of all those dark brown areas because you've got everything to blend. There we go. And then over here, we'll do the same thing. Now, I know that uh, I, I released a community poll asking about uh, trying a new map theme and uh, and LUT and you know I tried it and I didn't like it and for me it kind of it, it, it changed the place for me Verde Beach is this for better or for worse this is the way it looks and we're gonna need to live with it I think because I don't want this to feel like a different place <laughs> so <laughs> you know we've been we've been dealing with the the the, the strange issues that come with vanilla and I think I think over time it, it's gotten better so maybe the trick is just to not worry so much so this is interesting look at where this snaps I can snap it inside but I can't snap it straight back I can even do this weird curvy thing but I can't do what I want to do so I'm gonna pull this over pull it back and then I really just wanted to make some sort of logical conclusion to this and then add an area that I can landscape heavily or at least in some in some logical way there we go no limit I'm not worried about you we're fine so here we go we've we've decorated this a little bit made it feel uh, special and unique and if there's anything that the old Lewis Lumber Company didn't feel, it's it's special and unique. It felt like a place. It was special to us because we know how it formed, but I want it to feel special to the outside world too. There we go. All we've got to do is add a simple water pipe. And we're good to go. We are good to go. We should add some redundancy to our water system. There we go. So we have a signal here. This one is not warranted. I'm going to take it away. We'll add a stop sign here. Oh, that's too far for power. I would have thought that this would have jumped. Not to worry, though. I think we're just going to use an earthquake sensor. It'll be fine. Truthfully, I could probably... It would probably wouldn't be the worst idea after all the disasters that we've had to... To think about a disaster shelter <laughs> maybe we'll use that to jump it's kind of a weird location but i think yeah that'll jump us with power maybe instead of trying to cheese the game i'm going to start to think about what actually would be helpful and this is a really prominent portion of this industry area so we are going to decorate this as well this road even though it's industrial it's really important to this area myrtle is uh myrtle hill so and that's the thing i've met developers that develop industrial and they care a great deal about the way that their sites look they know that people uh, companies particularly cleaner industrial operations are looking for cleaner looking industrial sites they want it to feel like a place that you go to that's a bit of an event so uh that's what we're giving them we're giving them places that feel organized and well planned and are easy to get to and easy to navigate around with trucks and other heavy vehicles we don't want to give them places that are poorly designed and feel dirty and unsafe that's <laughs> and that's that's kind of what you saw in some older operations that's not what you're seeing right here in fact all of these little nooks and crannies we should probably decorate So I've created a landscaping theme over there, and I want to stick with that. I, I kind of messed up over here. I think that I probably should have kept a similar theme. Because you would think that one landscape architect would be doing the landscaping for all of these sites. So with that in mind, you would want it to look like the same person designed it. There we go. And I'm not going to keep landscaping, but I... Uh, we're gonna slowly fill this all in. And there are things like that in, in each of my builds at this point that I've been thinking about how I wanna start dedicating a small portion of every episode to fixing little things. 
little things. And as I say, no more landscaping. I meant, I meant not much more landscaping. So this is an accessibility issue, but we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. I could try to fix that. It would be very cumbersome without some mods. Oh, I can't leave it. I can't leave it. It's too much. Okay, so you might think that I've gone crazy, but look at how this looks now. This feels like a finished area. Right here, it looks like the game generated it. Like it's just a, a forestry brush and some random trees. It just doesn't feel good. And I want this to feel good. This feels like someone put some thought and time and effort into it. And I think that that's what really separates uh, places that are, that are well planned and places that are just dropping stuff all over the place. So Myrtle Fields is starting to become developed. We need to move a couple of things. So when we look back over here, so we've got this medium warehouse, uh, engineered wood plant, we've, we don't need that. This right here though, furniture factory, now it doesn't have enough goods. Whoa, no, oh no. <laughs> Ooh, I killed Lewis Shores. We're gonna hook up a temporary power line to get this place back online. Oh, shoot. I thought it was still connected. Right here, it was not. Well, it was vibrant, and it will once again be vibrant someday. It's redeveloping, so that's something. Oh, that's brutal. That is really tough. I feel bad about that one. That said, stop. Let's switch the style. European suburbia. It'll match the Lewis Garden 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 City at this point. If this all became decommissioned, we might as well give it some thought. And this is the thought I want to give it. And this will really have a different character. And I like that, so we're gonna go with it. Over here, we've got a bunch of stuff. So we're gonna get rid of the pulp mill. We don't need that anymore. We'll get rid of some of these warehouses. And look at this traffic. It's just wild. And this is part of the reason why we're rethinking about these land uses. We just don't want this kind of traffic pouring onto residential streets. And where does it go if it's in this area besides residential streets? So this will help resolve some of that. I get rid of this bio pellet mass plant as well. And then over here, <laughs> we have an old coal power plant. It's well past time that that's decommissioned. Sorry, coal is a thing of the past in a 2137. And if it's not, then the whole world is, the temperature's risen, risen five degrees Celsius and, and Verde Beach is underwater. So we're not gonna contribute to that. <laughs> so we're gonna be a little bit more thoughtful. We'll get rid of these. We don't need those anymore. Look at everyone loves this. They think this is wonderful. The city dies and, and the citizens rejoice, apparently. <laughs> so a few more things to get rid of. And then they're not rejoicing over the city dying, what they're rejoicing over. Wow, you, you d destroy all the collected resources. That's unfortunate, but not unsurprising. So we're gonna go with it. This health clinic is not connected either. Temporary power line. We've gotta make the game happy. We can't just make ourselves happy. All right, so this is a plastics warehouse because it's turning paper and plastics into printed products. So we're gonna relocate that right over here. Let's give it a temporary home. We've gotta look at our terrain before we do anything. And <laughs> it's a good thing that we did because this is a mess. I, yeah, yeah. So uh, truthfully, I'd love to put it right here. It's a terrible location. This is going to function as an arterial and, you know, oh man, it's a terrible location. Uh, thankfully, there's not enough room, so I can't make bad decisions because part of me really wants to make a bad decision. So instead of making a bad decision, we're going to do the, the right thing and we're going to level out a pad for this building. So I really want there to be a road coming off from here. So we're going to add that right here and we'll get rid of this. 
I just wanted that to, to make a, a nice tight connection against this building. And now we're going to level this out just a bit. So that we can smooth it out. And again, work with our terrain. The tools are all there to make this beautiful. We've just got to try. So, we will move the plastics right over here. And I think I get to keep these. Uh, the material, that is. The raw material. Because... It's over, yeah, 90% full. That's that's great. So that's going to be okay. The other thing that we want to move is our furniture factory. Let's look at our terrain again. I am going to do something potentially controversial. And we are going to bring some life into this area. We are going to add our furniture factory right here if it will fit. Oh, it's oriented in the wrong direction. And I'm not loading off the collector. That's a terrible idea. Oh, I talked about that bad idea, though. I think I got one in me. Oh, there's my bad idea. There it is. Oh, I love this bad idea. Oh, this is, this is, this is good. This is really good. It's really bad and it's good at the same time. I think it's going to work out okay. So I should have, there's not really any grading of this that's going to make any sense. So what we're going to do is just try to, to make it work as best we can. So that's going to involve some carving out and we will level and then we're going to use some some of our favorite hiding asset. So a little bit of overgrowth there. We don't need this power line anymore so we can decommission that. And that's a good thing, because if we were to have a thunderstorm, we don't want that. Alright, so this is still struggling with timber, which is interesting to me. I don't really understand what the struggle is, because we've got plenty of it, I believe. Oh, we do not. Oh, it's alright. So that's paper. Plain timber, right here. We've got this set to empty. So we're going to keep this to balanced. The paper can be set to empty, and our log yard will be set to balanced. So, you can start to see, I've seen a couple of cars come this way, or cars, uh, freight trucks come down this way. There are a multitude of paths to get here, and we probably are, are we, we don't have enough storage. That It's fine. It's going to work. If we export some, that's, that's fine too. Let's take a look. Still producing a lot, and it actually says that we're lining up with what we need because our production is lower than it was. So we are in an okay spot. One thing we need to finish though, that we didn't do, this. And now that things have changed here, we're probably gonna wanna think about new neighborhoods in the future. Because we have all of this land available to us at this point. We also have excess power line here, we'll get rid of that. And we've got a couple of things that just are no longer connected. So I'm going to make a couple of targeted connections because we don't want to lose these or lose the efficiency. For the time being, we'll keep it there. And wow, it's impressive. Let's just look at, at all of the space that's available, all of the infrastructure in this land. That right of way, we might do a couple of things around the edge. But for the most part, right of way, it, vacation, which is what we would need to do, a process that we would need to do to vacate this right away, to, to make it available to other users, is very difficult. Uh, particularly when you're giving it away to a developer. <laughs> that's, that's a challenge, unless they're giving more road, road right of way back, which they're not really going to want to do. And even areas like this, like, this doesn't make any sense. We have a frontage road to what is a local collector. We know that we don't need that, but vacating this right of way is going to be difficult and time consuming and a process that the, the elected officials will question. So I wonder if it actually happens. My guess is no. I think you end up with this wacky right of way and everyone wonders why it's there. And we know the story, you and I do. It's there because the Lewis Lumber Company used to be there. And this is one of those stories that, you know, the, the grandfather sitting at his, at his house in Lewis Shores says, well, back in the day when I was a kid, there was a lumber company here, and you know, these were important roads, and these people founded the city, and it, they're the best. That's the story that Grandpa's going to tell from his front 
deck, which he doesn't have, I guess. Maybe these, these folks right here. They've got the right idea. Nice view of the water. Yeah, I love these buildings too. So, uh, yeah, this is, it's, it's gonna really change the character. Now, interesting, we had a bunch of traffic over here. And you see that we still have some. They're still using this, but now it's serving the I-10 Industrial Park, which, that's fine. I don't, I don't know that if, if we're gonna continue to do this, that we wanna keep the roadway network the way it is. Here's where we might do a targeted vacation just to allow for a more, more logical connection here. Potentially an overpass to come back around and connect up with this bridge that's already here. Uh, that would, to me, or, or looping it back around, probably the less expensive alternative and making that connection something, but this can't stay as it is. So with that though, I think that we've done some interesting things to the Lewis Lumber Company, and I think that the lumber company is in a stronger position than it was before. Yes, the profits are down a bit, but Linus has made a ton of money from freeing up this land. Now this can be developed for residential and commercial uses of a moderate intensity. And this land is going to become increasingly valuable. And you already see that that the value from Primo Verde and Prospect Heights, Station Heights, is creeping its way into here. And all it's really missing to really max out this value is some development. Now, this right here is a problem. And my guess is a lot of that has to do with noise. Yeah, it's 100% noise. So we're gonna need to do something about that. Even if this stays here, we're gonna need to, to you know, landscape generously around it to keep the noise at <laughs> bay, something. And I don't know that, I'm, I'm, this is just a test. I'm gonna get rid of these trees. I wanna know if this is gonna be enough to prevent that spillover of that noise. My guess is no. Actually, actually that's not bad. So all we have to do is isolate this in a forest <laughs> and everything's gonna be just fine. Well, let's get rid of these trees and we'll see what happens. Wow, is that extreme. That that really, you know, and the road's another concern. We're gonna need to look at the roads, but we're in a good spot. We're moving things in, in a positive direction. There's only one more thing I want to do. So it was mentioned in the comments, I believe it was Daenerys that mentioned that I might have mixed up some of my bike lanes and had some normal pads through here. So we're gonna wanna get those fixed. I also want to make sure that my lanes logically connect. I think that they do. Going all the way through here. Yeah, we make our connection to downtown. Now, where it might not is, I might have confused some of these. I just want to peek through here. It looks to me like we're okay. Yeah, I got lucky. <laughs> because that is the kind of mistake that I would absolutely make. But it looks it looks okay. I think that we we do have mostly bike lanes and I think they're actually well utilized bike lanes. In fact, if we take a look, yeah, we've got some we've got some cyclists. We've got some cyclists. Wow. What? Interesting. Absolutely no one going over. I, I, I guess I didn't expect that. That's okay. I'm getting sidetracked now. And that is one of my flaws. Although I'm very curious as to why no one is using this. They're all just getting off. There's no reason to come right here. Okay, we've got to do something about this. So I think there's no reason to come because there's no destinations to reach in close proximity. And that we can solve. So before we sign off here, why don't we do a quick look right here and we'll do a quick city tour. Okay, and now that we've gotten that out of the way, now we should finish this. And what we'll do is just move this on through. Let's look at our terrain. 
and we're going to want to loop that back around. We don't want this to have a lot of grade. A meter's okay. That's fine. I'm going to back this up, and we're going to make sure that we only have our angle on. I want to get this as close as I can without the game getting mad at me. There we go. Much better, and then we'll convert this over to a bike lane. I don't really know where to go from here, but that's okay. You can reach these destinations at this point. So I'm curious if that changes anything for any cyclists here. Probably not. <laughs> it does not. But at some point it might have, you know, if I speed it up, maybe I'll see some change. You know, I guess there's just not a lot of interest in going to the plastics factory. The, or the printing press, rather. Um, maybe someday in the future. <laughs> that day is not today. Anyway, I think we've left this in a good spot. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.